to Crystal Ball College Football. Once again, we're back we're talking about another key matchup from the last week of college football, and uh, we're moving to the Pac-12 today as we're talking Utah USC. Um, Utah wins this one 43-42. A lot of fun. Um, this conference, it, it's very clear in this conference that it's a four-team race at this point with Utah, USC, UCLA, Oregon. I mean, all four of them have been awfully impressive for different points in the season, right? They, they've each had their hiccups, but for the most part, you've seen some brilliant flashes from all of them. Um, and once again in this one, you saw brilliant flashes from both these teams, to be honest. This was a must-win for Utah at home. They absolutely needed this to really still have a chance to achieve the goals they set for themselves early in the season. Um, this was a team that had college football playoff expectations, and you're seeing there at four and two, you know, you can't be feeling all that great about it. Um, so they come into this one kind of knowing they need to find a way to win this game, and they did. Uh, USC, on the other hand, I felt like they performed really well, though, um, and we'll talk about them after. But let's start with Utah. Cam Rising, this guy's a superstar, right? I mean, 415 yards passing, two touchdowns. He also had three touchdowns on the ground and 60 yards rushing. Um, he was terrific. I mean, everything about what he did in this game was just him being in command of this offense and him being in command of exactly knowing what Utah needed to do to win this game. And that was that was huge. And I didn't come into this game thinking that Utah was going to win this game just by him airing it out, but that's what they had to do. Uh, they only had 138 yards rushing. Um, Rising had 60 of those rushing yards. So the running backs really didn't do a whole lot in this game, which again was absolutely shocking to me that that was the case. Um, on In the passing game though, you know, Rising was very good. Uh, he had a very nice day. Dalton Kincaid, their tight end, I mean, guys, 16 catches for 234 yards and a touchdown from a tight end. <sighs> USC had no answer for him. He was open the entire game, created explosive plays as well. Um, he was the go-to guy, and he was awesome. And because of that, it allowed this offense to really move without a hiccup, even with the run game not being as efficient as I kind of expected it to be coming into this one. Now, defensively, I don't know what's going on with Utah. They're just not they're just not winning in the secondary, which is shocking. Usually they have great defensive back play. That hasn't happened this year. Um, and they were really bad once again. So again, I'm seeing here going, okay, they couldn't run the ball and their defense was really bad. How the heck did Utah win this game? It's nuts to think about. It really is because here's how bad Utah's defense was. Uh, USC converted five of nine third downs, so you're well over 50% there. Utah had zero three and outs the entire game, zero of them. Gave up 556 yards. They forced zero turnovers. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it was just Caleb Williams and USC just moving the ball up and down the field uh, with no hiccups. Now, where Utah did have some production was they had four sacks, they had seven pass breakups, and... USC was 0 of 2 on fourth downs. So there were some things that Utah did well, but in general, I mean, they were not good defensively at all. I, again, just shocking that they're able to win this game with giving up numbers like that and giving up conversions at the rate that they did. Um, but I felt the biggest turning point in this game was Utah was driving down the field and they fumbled the ball inside the USC five-yard line. USC gets the ball and you're seeing they're going, okay, USC's up by seven. They're going to drive all the way down the field, and this game's going to be over because that's what we had seen basically the entire game was USC just doing whatever they wanted offensively, but Utah got a big stop, and I felt like everything could have snowballed from that. You know, you fumble the ball. You're about to score to tie the game. You give up a big play uh, defensively, and you give up a touchdown. The game's probably over, but they really manned up, and they were able to get a stop. So that was key for Utah. They come away with a win, a massive win that now gives them an opportunity to make it to a Pac-12 championship. They're in the running absolutely now. Uh, they're 5-2, and 3-1 and one in conference. They have a bye week. Uh, and then next Thursday, they go on the road to Washington State. That can be a little tricky, uh, but they should be able to get through that one regardless. Now let's talk about USC a little bit. I mean, the offense is just nuts. I mean, Caleb Williams, 381 yards passing, five touchdowns. He also had 57 yards rushing. 
Um, zero turnovers, six and a half yards per carry. I mean, how do you lose this game? I, I mean, seriously, how do you lose this game? And uh, truthfully, I don't know how. I mean, the way they moved the ball, it just were a couple opportunities here and there that they didn't quite take advantage of. That was the only reason they lost this game because offensively, they could not be stopped. Um, and then defensively, they were fine. Like, they were fine for stretches. It just felt like every time they needed a stop outside of the fumble, the fumble was massive. I, I felt like, you know, once again, their turnover margin is just completely insane at this point in the season. But outside of that, when they really needed a stop, they couldn't get it. And you really felt it at the very end of the game. Utah went on a 15 play, 75 yard drive over five minutes and 30 seconds uh, to score a touchdown with 48 seconds left in the game. They went for two to try to win it. They got it. But it just felt like, you know, USC needed that stop. You're up by seven. You have a chance to close out this game with one more stop, and they just could not get it. Really unfortunate for them. Um, and now they got to sit back and go, okay, what if? You know, they're in that what if game. But the good news for USC is uh, they get the Pac-12 schedule. So they got Arizona on the road, Cal, Colorado at home. They're going to be 9-1 and one going into their matchup at at UCLA and then they also have Notre Dame to finish but you know after watching Notre Dame offensively I just I don't think they're gonna have enough to beat USC this year so that UCLA game is probably going to be played for a berth in the Pac-12 championship that's kind of my mindset right now is that one of those teams is going to the Pac-12 championship and it's probably going to be the winner of that game um, but there's still a lot of work to do I just feel like it's such a weird year because USC doesn't get to play Oregon on their schedule. So Oregon kind of slides by them. Utah and Oregon still have to play each other. So there's going to be another loss there. Um, but it's fascinating. The finish to this year in the Pac-12 is going to be so interesting. Those four teams are going to duke it out for spots in the Pac-12 championship. And I'm so happy they don't have divisions. It's just going to be the top two teams, which gives everyone an absolute chance to get into the Pac-12 championship and make some noise, potentially get a college football playoff berth uh, if they're 12-1, they'll have an opportunity at it. But another really fun game, really entertaining. Um, later on this week, I have a few more episodes about recapping the week and then also my bets, best bets uh, for the next week in college football. But thanks for listening. This has been Crystal Ball College Football.